So in my last two videos, I talked about what would happen if if I sold put spreads regularly on SPY, the, the ETF SPY, and then the next video I talked about Tesla. So in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, what would happen if we sold put spreads on Netflix on a regular basis. So every Friday, sell a put spread on Netflix out of the money put spread with 28 days to expiration. So four weeks later. All right, so I'm going to go to Yahoo Finance and then look up Netflix and I'm going to uh, look up, take, I'm going to download historical prices. So if you haven't watched my previous two videos, go watch it before watching this video. All right, so I'm going to go to histor historical data and I'm going to click on max over here. I'm going to click on apply and then I'm going to click on download. Then I'm going to open the spreadsheet. Now let's just go see what, how uh, how old is Netflix? So 2002. So we've got about about almost 20 years of data. So about 19 years of data with Netflix. I'm going to remove adjusted close and volume. I'm going to remove high and low. I'm going to keep I'm going to keep open and closing price because I'm going to be comparing one Friday's open price and I'm going to compare it with the closing price of the Friday the following four weeks so so now I just want Friday so I'm gonna put a formula to give me Friday so weekday uh, serial number the date here and just return type one or actually I think I'm gonna take two and and then just apply the formula everywhere and I believe Friday will be number five. So the 24th is a Friday and the 31st is a Friday and the seventh is a Friday as well because the 10th is a Monday. All right, so now I'm gonna just filter and remove all the, I'm just gonna keep Friday so I'm gonna delete everything else. So select all, remove five and then select everything here and delete it and then I'll be left with Fridays only after this gets deleted so now I've got only Fridays so now I'm gonna compare from Friday to Friday so I'm gonna go four weeks apart so if this is one Friday I want one two three four so I want to compare this Friday with this Friday which should be 28 days apart so 24 and 28 should bring me to June 21st let's look at a different one here so May 31st and 28 days should put me to June 28th, perfect. So I want to compare th this one to this one and then just carry and then just carry the formula. All right, so it's going to be equals uh, the closing. So the, I'm comparing the closing price divided by the open price of the previous day. And then I want to subtract one from that just to get the difference. And then I want to round it. Actually, so if we click OK, just to see if it makes sense. So it's, it shows here that Netflix was down 19% from May 24th to June 21st. It was down 19% if we compare the open and the close, which makes sense, $1.21 and 97 cents. Not sure, these might be a split, a split adjusted prices, but regardless, it's still good. So, and then I wanna just round it to two decimals. So round parentheses, comma, two decimals, and then another parentheses. There we go, we've got 19%. All right, I'm gonna scroll the formula all the way down. And now I'm just gonna copy this, all these values here, and then paste it in a different tab here. And I'm actually gonna paste as values, sorry. All right, so now it's pasted as values. And now I want to just count how many times do, how many times do these occurrences occur? Or how many times do these variances occur? So basically this shows that uh, Netflix dropped 19% 28 days later for this period here. And then for the next following 28 day period, which is from May 31st to June 28th, Netflix dropped 7%. And then the following 28-day period, Netflix, which was from June 7th to, to July 5th, Netflix was up 8%. So I'm just comparing all these different 28-day periods. 
so I'm just gonna count right now how many different values we get so I'm just gonna do a count if here count if uh, parentheses so the range is here the criteria is the value that's next to it and so now I've got only this showing once okay I'm just gonna paste as values because now I want to remove the duplicates um, actually before doing that I'm just gonna uh, sort it by highest to lowest just to see it clearly so yeah I've got 89 showing twice so this is duplicate value so I want to I basically want to just remove the duplicates click OK so I still get my 89 that comes up twice but I don't see a second line for it so I remove the duplicates so now I've got my my the, the number of times uh, Netflix was up for example 20 percent uh, 28 days later okay from open price to closing price uh, and now I'm going to count look at the percentage how much this value represents out of the total occurrences so I'm just gonna take the cell divided by the total column the sum of the total column so this divided by this and I'm gonna apply the formula all over and I should get one because this is the percentage I'm gonna make it uh, I'm gonna show it as a percentage and I'm gonna add two decimals to it and here I'm just gonna look at the cumulative percentage next to it so I'm just gonna do this equals this plus the previous value and I'm gonna apply the formula all the way down now the last value should be 100 if this is correct yeah okay and I'm gonna put this uh, this this uh, column here in a nice um, format all right so let's go straight to zero all right so this shows for Netflix that 62 percent of the time Netflix is trading at the same price or higher 28 days later so I'll repeat that so this means that 62 percent of the time in the past 19 years uh, if you compare Netflix from one day from one Friday to Friday in four weeks so 20 days later if you compare Netflix from one Friday to another Friday which which is 20 days later Netflix was trading at the same price or higher 62% of the time so shows this shows an edge and if we look for an 80% probability it shows here that 80% of the time Netflix does not trade below 8%. Does not trade below 8% 28 days later if you compare from Friday to Friday. So that's what this means here. Now I still have Tesla spreadsheet up, so let's just compare with Tesla. Tesla we had 59% for flat for either flat or higher, and for 8% we had 79%. Uh, Netflix for 8% we have 80%. So it's pretty close. Let's see what 13% here shows. We've got 88% on Netflix, and I think for Tesla we had 90%. So it's pretty similar, as you could see. So what this means now? So what this means is, if you sell an out-of-the-money put spread on Netflix every Friday, uh, from Friday, and then pick an expiration that's 20 days later, depending on how out-of-the-money your strike is, so your strike might be 3% lower, your, your strike might be 10% lower, it depends on the expected move that day but based on these probabilities based on how low your short strike is how out of the money your short strike is these are the probabilities of winning in the past uh, 19 years so let's let's look at an example so let's look up Netflix let's look at the um, option let's look at the expected move so 20 day, we're July 9th so 20 days later will be 1 2 3 4 will be August 6th so now we do have earnings I think earnings is around July 23rd so because earnings is before expiry then expected move will be a little bit higher this time so just look let's just see what the expected move is Netflix is at 530 so at 530 expected move is about 20 points plus 24 so it's a it's a it's just a matter of counting or adding the value of the call option and the value of the put option at the money strike so at the money strike is 530 Put is worth 20, call is worth 24. So 24 plus 20 is about 44, 45. So expected move is about 45. 
So this means that we, if we sell a put spread at 5.30, my, sorry, 5.30 minus uh, 45. So if our, okay, this is completely wrong. So 5.30 minus 45. So if we sell a put spread where the short strike is 485 and the long strike can be 480. So put spread of 485, 480 for August 6th expiry. Well, it all depends on how out of the money the short strike is. So let's go see how out of the money the short strike is. So 485 divided by 530 is 91. So that means the short strike is about 8.5% uh, lower. So let's go look at 8.5%. So it's, a, it's going to be somewhere around here. So it, it basically means we have an 80% chance of winning with this put spread, the 485, 480 put spread for August 6. In this case, we have about an 80% chance of winning. Now, like I mentioned in my previous videos, the expected move is not going to be the same every time. This time, the expected move is a little bit high because we have earnings in between. But if you look at a week where there's no earnings, expected move might be lower. Uh, let's look at, so earnings is July 20th. So if we look at an expiry before July 20th, expected move is percentage wise is definitely not going to be as high now it's not going to be 28 days uh, later so it's not going to be this it's not going to be high enough anyways to compare so what does the august 6th expiry get you put spread how much can you get out of it so if we did the 485 480 you could see the 485 the mid is around i don't know 680 or 660 670 and and the mid for the 480 is about let's say 580 so it gets you about 90 cents i like on a five point wide spread i like to get at least uh, one dollar let's go i'm going to log into question just to see what i can really get all right so i'm going to look up netflix and flx uh, look at the straddle value for august uh, 6th which is 29 days later uh, 530 so it's about 45 like I mentioned so I, I basically want the vertical at uh, 485 so if I go to 485 480 um, it gives me around so it's a dollar 70 so half of uh, half of a dollar 70 is about 85 cents so that's how much this put spread would give me for the uh, August 6 expiry and as you can see it has a delta here the long delta is six it's showing me 0 0.06 so that basically means that there's a six percent chance that this option this leg is going to be in the money at expiry so if it has a six percent chance it's actually it gives me that means it has a 90 94 percent chance of winning so it's actually a higher percentage than what's this is what this is providing me here but as i mentioned in my tesla video i'd rather go with past uh, past probabilities here um Although these deltas are probably also based on past probabilities. I'm not sure how these deltas are calculated, to be honest. But you basically have a, at least over 80% chance of winning based on these uh, probabilities of winning on, in this put spread. So let's look at the chart of Netflix just to give you some examples here. So let's look up chart. Let's look at a three month period. So basically what this strategy means, if you want to be mechanical and just sell regularly, we want to go from Friday to Friday. So April, so let's start here. So April 8th, April 9th, April 12th. So April 9th is a Friday. You could see that Netflix is op open at 552. So if you sell a put spread um, at, at on that day, now obviously I don't know what the expected move was of Netflix at that day, but let's say, I mean, if it didn't have earnings, we're going to say it's about 25, 30 points. So let's say 30 points. So if it's 30 points, my short strike will be at around 530, uh, 520, sorry. So, and my my 28 days expiry will be uh, May 7th. So if we go to May 7th, Netflix is trading at 508. So in this example, this put spread would have been a loser if I just held it to expiry. But there's a way to avoid max loss or at least reduce max loss, and which I'll explain a little bit later, but it's basically selling a call spread against your put spread so this was april 9th now we go to the next friday which will be april 16th so april 16th netflix is trading at 550 again 
I'm going to have a 520 short strike again. So my expiry will be May 14. So let's go to May 14. And we could see that Netflix is 47. So we have another loser in this case. So this is a bad example. But as you can see, just from the chart, you can tell that a few pet, the, the beginning put spreads will be losers because there's a big drop right over here. All right, so we, we did April 16th. So the next Friday will be April 23rd. Netflix is at 509, opens at 509. Let's once again, let's just say the expected move is about uh, well, Netflix did drop, so let's say it increased, but just to be conservative, let's say it's still 30 points 20, with 28 days to go. Because we saw expected move right now with earnings in between is about 45 points. So on 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 periods or on regular days where there's no earnings, expected move is going to be lower. So that's why I'm I'm picking a th I'm saying expected move would be 30 points. So April 23rd, uh, Netflix is at uh, 510 minus 30, so it's about 480. So my short strike will be 480 for May 21st. So May 21st. Netflix is at closes at four or four ninety seven or almost five hundred. So we've got a winner. So the first two ones were losers. This one is a winner. All right. So next expiry is April thirtieth. Netflix is at opens at five oh five. Let's just say expect to move is thirty points again. So my short strike will be about four seventy five. And twenty eight days later will be May um, May twenty eighth. I guess. Uh, May, yeah, May 28th. So Netflix is at 504. So it ends up being flat. So we have another winner. So the next expiry here will be April 29th. I'm looking for the next Friday. So May 3rd, May 5th, May 6th, May 7th. So May 7th is the next Friday. Netflix opens at 504. Um, once again, let's say my short strike is 475. So if I look at June 5th, uh, June 5th, um june 5th or i guess june 4th uh netflix is closes at 494 so once again we have another one i remember in may of this year we had a tech sell-off so this is not something that happens often but we had a pretty good tech sell-off so that's why we had two losers but as you can see everything else were, were winners let's continue so may 7th the next friday expiry or the next friday trade will be may 14. netflix is at 487 I'm going to I'm going to pick a 30 point move uh, expected move once again. So it's my short strike will be 457 uh, or 455 or 460 let's say. So let's look at Netflix on May on June 12. So June 12 Netflix is or June 11 Netflix is at 490. So we've got ourselves another put spread winner. Uh, let's continue. So May 7th the next expiry will be May 4 I, I think we just did May 14. So May 17, May 18, 19, May 21, May 21. So May 21, Netflix is at 503. So my short strike will be about 470. Sorry, yeah, 470. So um, let's look at June 19 or June 18. Yeah, June 18, Netflix is at 496. So we have ourselves another winner again. So let's continue. The next expiry is May 28. Netflix is at opens at 504. My short strike, let's say, is at 475. Uh, so June 25th, uh, Netflix is at 528. So definitely a winner. And so you could tell. Obviously, I don't. I don't have to continue. But all the all the following put spreads that I'll be opening on Fridays, they 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 would end up being winners. Just from you can tell from the chart. Because Netflix comes goes back up here, so only the ones that I open around here are the ones that are losers. Uh, but that's because we had a tech sell-off. But basically, that's what the probabilities show you here is you've got first of all just between just looking at the flat at Netflix being flat or higher, we have an edge. It's more than fifty percent of the time. It's sixty-two percent of the time. But then if you want to even make it safer and do a put spread at expected move, which will have a strike that is out of the money. So it's going to be a strike that's below the current market price. So you still have room for Netflix to drop and you can still win. And as you can see at around 8-9%, uh, if you take a short strike that's 8-9% lower than the current market price, you would get an 80% probability of winning. Um, so now what happens? How can you reduce max loss? So 
one way of reducing max loss if you want to be mechanical is if you have a 28 day expiry and let's say over here we had our, I think we had a put spread at 520 okay and then at some point Netflix was completely breached a, the 520 was completely breached and Netflix dropped all the way down to 496 and it ended up closing below 520 by a lot now obviously when it's breached you don't know if it's gonna come back or not but let's say you want to be mechanical so what you could do is so say you sell a put spread so let's say we sold a put spread and we said we sold the 520 put and we bought the 515 so that's a put spread and let's say we collected a dollar from this trade okay we collected a dollar but then Netflix dropped all the way down to uh, we saw that it dropped even below 400 but let's say it dropped all the way down to 500 uh, so this put spread right now is sitting at a max loss if it expires if Netflix expires at 500 uh, this put spread is going to be worth five dollars to close because it's five point wide so if, if you close this put spread for five dollars and you only collected a dollar then your max loss is going to be um, four dollars right but what you could do to reduce max loss is sell a call spread on the other side so you could either sell it and turn it in, and turn this put spread into an iron condor so you could sell a, a call spread over here let's say at minus 525 and plus uh, 530 so in order to not add additional risk the width of the spread has to be the same and of course the expiry has to be the same so with one week to go let's say there's one week left in the expiry and you see that your netflix your your your, your put spread is still breached maybe with one week to go you could start taking action and maybe sell a an, a call spread against your put spread that's completely breached Therefore, you might collect additional credit here. So I don't know, let's say you do collect, uh, let's say 75 cents from this here. So so now, instead of your max loss being $4, you're gonna reduce it by 75 cents. So now your max loss is only $3.25. Because you cannot lose on both sides. If Netflix can, your max loss for the put spread is anywhere below 5.15. Your max loss on the call spread is anywhere below five, anywhere above 5:30. Netflix at expiry cannot be at both in the at both places in the same time, so it's either going to be below 5:15 or above 5:30. But actually, if Netflix comes back up and lands anywhere here, this is your profit zone. You actually make full profit. Your pro your full your full profit would be that one dollar that you collected and that 75 cents that you collected from the call spread. So. It, it does two things when you sell that call spread it reduces your max loss and it still gives you a chance to maybe win on the trade in case netflix comes back up but if netflix stays at 500 well at least you collected an extra 75 cents for free and you reduced max loss and if you want you could bring your short strike so instead of selling a 525 530 call spread you can sell a 520 525 uh, 25 call spread so you will end up with a 515 520 put spread and a 520 525 call spread so this combination here is an iron butterfly why because the short strikes are the same so as long as your short strike doesn't as long as your short call strike isn't lower than your short put strike you cannot lose on both sides if you, if your short call strike is below your short put strike then you'll you, you are inverted and you might lose twice so as long as you respect that so the close the your call spread cannot get any closer than 520 in this case so if, if you have a 520 525 call spread you'll collect more credit and you have a smaller zone of winning but you're collecting more of a credit instead of 75 cents Maybe you'll collect a dollar twenty-five, so more credit, so smaller max loss, and you could still win if Netflix comes back up and closes at expiry at five twenty. So this is one mechanical way of 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 uh, managing this put spread that is breached, and as you can see, it doesn't happen often. But if it does, this is one way of managing it. Another way would be to just roll the put spread. But you'll, if you want to roll a put spread for a credit, you're going to have to add contracts. So it's 
you're adding more risk to the trade so it might not be a good idea to just keep uh, adding contracts to save a put spread if you want to be mechanical with this trade then you want to sell a call spread and just move on take the loss and move on but you're still selling new put spreads every friday with the market now to find out how much you can really make from this strategy well it really depends what the expected move is every time you open the spread and it depends how much you collect but usually you can collect if you try to collect a dollar on a five point wide spread and if let's say your short strike is always at eight percent lower so you have an 80 percent chance of winning so you're i don't know you're collecting a dollar you when you win you win a dollar 80 percent of the time and when you lose well, it depends on how much you reduce your max loss. And it depends if you do take action and sell that uh, call spread or not. So it's hard to say exactly how much you can, how much money you can make from it. But you definitely see that there is an edge selling it. And obviously the higher the implied volatility on the underlying, the more edge you have because the premiums will be higher. And your short strike will be further away, making the trade safer. Now, now there are softwares that allow you to do back testing. I think eDelta Pro is one of them. It is kind of expensive. I haven't, I've tried the free trial, but I didn't pay for it. But this one would allow you to really uh, back test and see particular uh, scenarios. If you, you can enter really specific scenarios and it'll give you the PNL for the past uh, 10 years. All right, so if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Like always, if you can open an account with Questrade to sell options, use my referral link below to get $50 in free commissions. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button, share with a friend, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.